The Alabama Department of Human Resources says it found thousands of violations at hundreds of daycare centers, which receive federal funds to support low-income children. A new law now requires DHR to check health and safety standards at those centers, which receive that money. Joining us live tonight with the special report is WSFA 12 News reporter Morgan Young. Morgan. Well, Mark, for centers like this one that fall under a religious exemption from having to be licensed, this is the first time that DHR has gotten to legally go inside and take a look. And at a first round of inspections, DHR found more than 15,000 violations. That's an average of more than 22 violations per center. And again, these are just the centers that are receiving federal funds. I spoke with DHR and advocates who say that these numbers are telling. Mm -hmm. To the ambulance to kill them. Three years ago, Kevin and Stephanie Wallace's two-year-old son, Cooper, got hurt at daycare. The doctor ran in and said, everybody stop. You know, we think he has broken his femur. They say they never got an explanation. We still aren't clear on how he hurt his leg. We didn't have any accountability. From a church facility exempt from licensing. We signed a form saying that they're not licensed and inspected by DHR, but in our mind, it was a church. It was a safe place for us to send our child. Cooper, now five, is back in daycare at a licensed facility that receives federal funding. Child Care Services Director Janetta Green says it's one of the nearly 700 that DHR checked for health and safety issues. We're not covering anything that the federal guidelines uh, did not say that we were to cover. Bare minimum standards producing big numbers. More than 15,000 violations statewide, including more than 5,000 staffing violations, more than 2,000 involving records and reports, and more than 4,000 issues with staffing ratios and programming, just from centers receiving grant money. It's always a concern when we see that, and uh, if you think in terms of the number that we did monitor and we saw these issues, and then there is still a group of facilities that we do not monitor. Hundreds, actually. Data from child advocacy group Voices for Alabama's Children shows that of the 1,938 total child care centers in the state, 956 are exempt. The 682 monitored this year include hundreds that are already licensed. Voices Deputy Director Rhonda Mann says monitoring subsidized centers is a good first step, but that there's still a gap. This does speak to uh, the issue about child care in our state. We don't know what's happening in centers without somebody going in. Alethea Mack has run a faith-based exempt child care facility for 12 years. For me, there's really no difference, you know, because the safety of the children comes first. She requests regular safety and health inspections from both the health and fire departments. Her decision to be exempt is simple. I wanted the freedom to be able to make sure that I would be able to be free to teach them the religious aspect. The reason parents like Christy Austin are okay with the center being exempt from licensing. It was based on what they were able to do with my child and how I felt comfortable with them. Hope Christian is subsidized. The center just went through DHR's first round of inspections. This is the deficiency report for Hope Christian. There are 15 issues listed here with sub points under each one. Many of these things, Max says, were able to be fixed that day, like covering outlets and storing hand sanitizer the right way. But some other things on the list need to be completed by the next time DHR comes to visit. Things like making sure staff and student records are available. Mac posts her results for parents to see. A state requirement. When you look at what they're asking us to do, it's minimal. Every center should have some regulation. But Green says many centers opted to actually not accept the funding anymore to avoid the process. <gasps> thousands of violations. And Green admits there are most likely thousands more. If they're not on a subsidy program, there's no one who goes out to regulate, goes out to monitor. But she assures the department is working where it can. A relief for families like the Wallaces. It just takes a huge weight off our shoulders. And a new level of accountability for thousands of other families. Now, like you saw, each center that was a part of this process is required to put those results up where you can see them. And if you're not seeing them, you absolutely have the right to ask. This is public information. Your children are the most important things to you, so you absolutely deserve the right to know what's going on at their child care center, especially if that center is receiving federal money on your child's behalf. And if you are not sure if your child's daycare center is subsidized, if it was part of this process, we have a list of all of the subsidized centers in our area by county right now on our website.
website. Mark. Morgan, thank you for that report. Each subsidized center has 90 days to correct any problems that were found. The DHR is currently now on its second round of inspections to make sure that those corrections have been made.